which I think most of us are familiar with, but if you're not, um, just gonna talk a little bit about what that is um, before we actually do the activities. Um, so linear perspective is a system that, um, you know, a lot of artists use um, when drawing realistically. Um, it's a really precise and mathematical way of calculating um, basically how an object recedes into space. Um, and so basically by, um, you know, figuring the system out, we are uh, also figuring out how to create the illusion of depth. So value is one way to um, portray that, but um, perspective is really the kind of key factor in making something look realistic. Um, and you know, when you think about perspective, I think that people have a tendency to think of um, buildings and like geometric shapes, um, you know, and things of that nature, like really kind of geometric mathematical things. Um, but perspective really applies in a lot of situations. It definitely applies to portraiture um, and to really drawing anything um, in which, uh, you know, space is involved. So um, it's really, really helpful. Um, and what we're gonna be doing today is just kind of some really basic activities that will help you understand how it works. Um, and yeah, so this is gonna be something that we're gonna be working on for um, this session and the next session, just because it's a little bit complex um, and it's tricky. Uh, even I admit like it's still something that I, uh, you know, struggle with at times. Um, so I'm gonna guide you through step by step of, um, learning that. Um, so just a little bit about how perspective was formed um, in the world. Um, if you've ever seen medieval paintings or really any artwork that is, um, you know, more in the realm of ancient, um, or actually not just ancient, but non-Western, um, you'll notice that um, at times, like there's not really the illusion of like a realistic person or um, you know scene, landscape, or anything like that. Um, you know, if you see people, it's usually like really frontal and flat. Like if you know, I'm thinking specifically of like Byzantine art um, or like Egyptian art. Um, you know, you always just see like the profile of people's faces, um, and it kind of looks more stylized and non-realistic. Um, it wasn't until uh, about the 14th century and more towards the Renaissance that perspective really started to um, be used successfully. And this kind of collided with, you know, new, um, new visions of the world and understandings of science. Um, so it's interesting also how art develops alongside, um, you know, these more um, scientific discoveries and whatnot, um, you know, at the time or before perspective, people were still thinking that the world was flat, um, not it never ended. <laughs> um, and so, you know, with the discovery of, you know, the world being round and also the fact that the earth wasn't the only planet in the solar system, and there's like this much larger um, realm that we live in, um, you know, people's worldviews and literally their vision also started to change. Um, so yeah, that's, that's uh, some background on perspective. So now I'm gonna share my screen um, with you guys and start um, talking about some vocabulary and some more logistical stuff, okay? So give me a second. Okay, all right. Um, so there are some pretty important words that we're gonna talk about right now. Um, the first one I would say is the horizon line. So this very neon looking line. Um, so this, another word for horizon line is your eye level. So it's basically um, this imaginary line that aligns with what you're seeing. Um, and anything above the vanishing point, you will see kind of like the underneath side of it, or you'll, you know, it'll look like it's receding upwards. 
And anything below the vanishing point will be receding downwards and you'll kind of be able to see the top of it. So this is really important um, in terms of establishing where we're at and what our own perspective is in terms of the world in front of us or you know our surroundings um uh yeah so the horizon line is where we begin um, and that's really important to figure out where it is um for what we're doing today um, and in general the horizon line is usually towards the middle of the page um, there are some situations where um, it would, wouldn't be, um, but we're not going to get into that today. Um, so another thing about perspective is that it can get very complex. Um, what we're going to cover today are two um, of the standard types of perspective drawings, and one is one point perspective and the second is two point. There is three point, four point, five point, um, depending on how many um, vanishing points there are in a uh, scene, which is the second vocabulary word that we're going to discuss today. So you'll see this little dot right here in the middle of the horizon line is called a vanishing point. So this is also an imaginary, um, an imaginary thing. Um, but it's basically the point where all of the lines in a image converge. Um, and this is also super important in helping you uh, guide basically where your lines are going towards. Um, and the third word is um, orthogonal lines, which is a very fancy word. Um, but another, you know, another word that we can use for that is just kind of like the parallel lines that um, are in a scene that are all sort of going in and receding towards something. So I'm going to show you guys um, a painting by Vincent van Gogh that sort of illustrates everything that we just talked about. Um, so, you know, you can see that this red line here is where the painter, um, you know, that, that line aligned with his vision. So, um, you know, he made a point to Establish that that is the horizon line. And then these lines right here, um, the orthogonal lines, um, are basically like some of the lines are real and some of them are implied. So, right here in the bed frame, you can see that that's a clear way of uh, a clear path towards the vanishing point. But then there's other, other lines that are not so obvious, kind of like right here where the legs of the chair are, um, you know. In real life, there isn't a line right here, but um, you know, a really great way to determine our vanishing point is by observing all of these lines, and you know, sort of trying to determine where they meet. Um, you know, we can't really like precisely determine this, um, but using a ruler or even just like you know. Um, I don't know if we talked about this last time, but holding a pencil like far away from you like this is like a really wonderful tool for drawing anything related to perspective. Um, you know, just kind of holding it away from your eye and, you know, trying to determine like what, you know, what direction is this line going in and then bringing it back to your paper. Um, a thing about vanishing points, um, for what we're doing today, we're going to be making these up, like inventing where the vanishing point is. Um, but when you're actually drawing from life and you're drawing something in front of you, it's super important that you try um, to figure that out, you know, by measuring these lines um, or like eyeballing them, not actually measuring them um, to sort of figure out where this point might be. Um, and it's a little tedious, but in the long run, it's much easier. Um, and once you have this stuff done, then the rest of the drawing is, you know, much simpler. Um, so, like I said, we're going to be covering one point and two point perspective today. So I just, I took some photos of um, areas in my house where I saw this applying. Um, so one point perspective is basically when you're looking at something front on um, and you can see the face of something. So, you know, if you're looking at a building, 
and one point perspective, you're looking at it from the very front and you can see the face of the building um, or, you know, stairs are a really great um, scene for one point perspective. Um, you know, they're converging up in kind of a triangle shape, but you can also see right here that the ledge um, of this is converging and even like the molding of the wall is coming up all into the same direction. Um, and then the face of the door isn't really contorted in any way. It's like very straight on. Um, and so here's another example of one point perspective. And I like this one because, um, you know, you can also see it very obviously in the floor, in the sort of wood grain of the floor. Um, uh, yeah, so right here, you know, you can see like the lines going, to, you know, towards the windows, the lines of the couch, of this chair, of this piece of furniture, of the television, of this armoire. Um, and, you know, if I were to try to determine where the vanishing point was, can you guys see my mouse? I think you can. It would be right, um, if you can't see it, in the middle of the window, just about. Um, yeah, so that's one point perspective or just kind of like the general gist of it. Um, so now we're going to begin the activity. So um, if you can get out a piece of paper and the rest of your materials, we're gonna um, do a short little um, graph type of thing. That's gonna help you sort of understand this better, really like ingrain it in your head, okay? Um, so the first thing you wanna do is just draw a line across the middle of your page and draw a little dot in the middle. And so this is your horizon line and your uh, vanishing point. And generally for one point perspective, the vanishing point is in the middle. Um, hence like why you can only see one side of something. Um, there are other situations where it wouldn't be in the middle and it might be like towards the side or this way, um, but that sort of begins to go into another uh, dimension of perspective. All right, so once you've done this, I'm gonna go to step two, which is drawing three squares on your page. They don't have to be exactly like these, or they're, they're not even squares, they're rectangles. You could draw a square if you want. Um, but the important thing is just that you draw one on the horizon line, like sort of, you know, in the middle, um, one above the horizon line and one below the horizon line. Um, and, you know, if you really want to challenge yourself, like if you've done this before, um, you can draw another shape or, you know, you could draw a triangle, you could draw a letter, um, which is, you know, pretty cool how that comes out. Um, you know, octagon, um, across, anything really, um, just as long as it's like face on, okay? So I'll give you guys a little bit to do that. Once you have all those squares drawn out, um, so at this point, I want you guys to take your ruler and draw a line connecting each corner. I actually forgot to do this one. <laughs> um, but take a line and draw um, a line from each corner directly towards the vanishing point. Yeah, I forgot this one too. So uh, model after my right one because I actually completed this one. Um, but this is also a really great way to understand three dimensional shapes too and how that works. Um, so even though you know the lines are gonna look a little bit crowded, um, just try your best to try to um, um, converge them. Sorry, it's pop up came up.
And also, guys, if you have any questions at any point, just shout them out or you can type them in the chat box um, and I'd be happy to help you. Or if you also like want to... What was that? Oh, I should have hated him, but he was a man. Oh, okay, someone has their mic on. Um, or if you want to um, send me a, like a progress photo or just, you know, check in that way, um, you know, feel free to send it in the chat box to me, okay? Or you can email me as well. I'll put my email in here. And then once you've drawn all those lines, um, you can go ahead and start connecting the secondary parts of it, the sort of like three-dimensional ones. And as you can see, um, I just used my ruler to try to determine like where one corner was in, in comparison to the next one. Um, Let me know if that doesn't make sense or you need like a more in-depth explanation of that, okay? Hey, Alyssa. Yes. Um, someone just joined. Could you kind of briefly explain what we're doing? Sure. Um, hi. So we are doing a, a lesson on perspective today, just like basic one point and two point perspective. Um, so you just need a pencil um, and a ruler, uh, some paper and an eraser. Um, and if you can, um, let's see. Sorry guys, I'm gonna come back to the beginning. Um, but you wanna sort of start off with drawing a line in the middle of your page um, and creating this dot. Um, so this is your horizon line and your vanishing point. And then once you finish that, you want to draw three uh, squares or rectangles. Um, so one on the above the horizon line, one below it, and one in the middle of the line. And then afterwards, you're going to use your ruler um, to sort of connect each corner of the rectangle to the horizon line. And then sort of um, create the second part, like the um, you know back areas of these to create the three-dimensional shape. Um, if at any point you need me to go back to any of the slides, just let me know, okay? And then I'm just gonna put this on the, um, no wait, that's not it. Did I, did I not put it in here? I had made um, a drawing that just has the, uh, sorry guys, hold on, let me try to find it. So let me share what I just opened up. So this is a finalized drawing that just has um, the actual shape outlined so that it's a little clearer. Okay, and I mean, I think that you can still sort of 
see the different steps in this final drawing. Um, but just let me know if you need me to go back to a prior slide, okay? So I'll give everybody just a, you know, a couple minutes to catch up at this point. To the next step um, or to the next thing. Okay, so now we're going to move on. Um, so you can go ahead and turn your page, or if you need to grab another piece of paper, um, you can go ahead and do so. Um, but once you have that piece of paper, um, we're basically going to start the same process by creating um, a horizontal line on your paper around the middle of it. Um, but this time, instead of having one point right in the middle of the line, you're going to create two points. So one on the very far left and one on the very far right. So what we're going to be doing next is uh, making a two-point perspective graph. Um, and two-point perspective is basically when you're looking at an object from its side so, or from like the corner of something. So, you know, if you could imagine like a book, um, you know, a book looks different like this as opposed to like this, right? So in this point, it, it is um, in two-point perspective because you have some lines converging this way and some converging this way, okay? Um, so this one is a little bit trickier because we're dealing with two vanishing points. Um, and, you know, you know, identifying one is already a little complicated, but um, in this point or in this situation, we have to identify two of them and make sure um, that sort of like the opposite lines are going to each vanishing point. Um, but we're not going to do it from life just yet. We're going to um, do a little exercise first. Um, so again, just a horizontal line and two dots. Okay. And then once you've done that, um, I want you to make two lines. It could be anywhere um, on the page. You could do more than two if you'd like. Um, you know, you can make them different lengths or uh, different distances from each other, different distances from the horizon line. Um, but just as long as you have two, one above and one below. Okay. So once you have that done, um, what we're going to do next is do the converging lines, okay? And so for this first part, um, it's a little self-explanatory. Um, you want to just bring everything on the right side of the line to the right point and everything on the left side to the left point, okay? In general, um, the first lines that are coming directly from this middle point right here um, will be that straightforward, okay? And in general, also, the two vanishing points are usually on um, the horizon line. Um, there are sometimes um, some situations where they're not, like one is a little bit above, um, but in general, they're usually on the same plane. Hi, Ari. 
Um, okay, so you hopped in a little late. Um, so we're doing uh, one and two point perspective drawings. Um, let's see. So do you have like a paper and pencil with you? I'm gonna have to watch, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try it when I get home. But I still okay. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. You can just watch. Um, Okay, I'm just, I'll go, I'll go back a little later so you can catch up with the, the first part, okay? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so before you try to do all this, <laughs> the second thing I want you guys to do um, is draw the other vertical lines. So, um, you know, in the bottom case, there's basically only three vertical lines, okay? So just the middle one, which is the corner, and then one edge, and then the second edge. So the same applies up here. So draw those first, okay? And then once you have those drawn out, then you can sort of establish where the other two corners of the rectangle are. So in this case, in the bottom one, um, the corner right here on the right. So this line is going to meet the vanishing point on the left, okay? And then on this side of the rectangle on the, le the far left, this one is gonna meet the vanishing point on the right. And that helps to um, complete the shape. And so you also notice that um, in this one, you're also seeing like a bird's eye view of the rectangle, um, whereas this one, you're seeing it from beneath. So you see the bottom of it. Okay, but you want to go ahead and do the same thing to the top shape. So once you have your defining lines right here on the edge, you can um, make a line from this corner all the way to the left. And from the left corner all the way to the right. Okay, so this is the final drawing of this one with the shapes outlined. Alright guys, um, since we have sort of gone through these activities a little sooner or quicker than I thought, um, I think that we have time to actually do an activity from life. So um, when you finish this drawing or both drawings, um, so the one point perspective and the two point perspective, um, I want you guys to um, take a little break, like a five minute break, um, or whatever five minutes is for you. We can reconvene at um, 4.45. Um, and at that point, um, we're gonna 
start drawing an object. Um, and so it can be anything like rectangular or square. Um, you know, you could just use a book or um, if you have a box, that's also a good thing, a box. Um, it could be, you know, anything as long as it's a more geometric shape. Um, and um, yeah, so we'll come back at 4.45 and um, draw this shape together. And um, also we can practice the value techniques that we did last week um, and sort of shade it as well. Okay. Um, so let's wrap these up and I'm gonna just stay on in case anybody has any questions or needs to consult me over anything. Um, you can just feel free to, you know, say something or like type it in the chat box and whatnot. Um, yeah, so at 4.45 we'll start um, drawing that, uh, we'll do the drawing activity. Okay. Try it. Hold on, guys. Sorry, I'm going to try to draw, show you guys this picture. Oops. So this is a really great example of two-point perspective. Um, there, there's actually a lot going on in this painting, um, but right here you can see that um, this, win this window right here is uh, has a vanishing point that's off the page. That's another thing um, in life. A, a lot of times like you can't really put you can't fit the vanishing point on your page um, physically. And so, you know, there's been many times where I've had to kind of draw it somewhere else, like on my desk or just really eyeball it. Um, like, for example, you know, if, if we saw like a very close vanishing point, um, you know, this window would be converging at a much more dramatic rate. Um, but because it's off of it, you know, we just kind of have to imagine that it's somewhere to the right. Um, and then the left, uh, the other converging point is right here um, and it's going in this direction. So that's one, um, that's one direction. And then there's also this right here. So this is going to another vanishing point. Um, so when you get into like cityscapes um, or even like sometimes, you know, the way things are arranged um, in your immediate environment, you'll find that there's like several different things going on, which is why we're not jumping right into it just yet. Um, and so we're going to start with just using one object, doing one object. Um, and then next week we'll go into, um, you know, a little bit more complex material. I hope that helps. Um, okay, I'm going to go back to... Um, um, okay. Reina, I'm just going to quickly go through these slides so you can see, okay? Um, I could also like email you all of this stuff, okay? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So you start with the, the horizontal line. This is one point perspective, okay? So you want to make two different drawings. Um, you want to make a couple squares, um, one on each or one above, one, one beneath, and one on the same eye level. 
And then using your ruler, um, try to imagine, you know, that there's lines going towards the center um, and, you know, physically make those lines, okay? And then once you have those first lines, you can start imagining like the more three-dimensional aspects of the shape and filling in the other um, edges of it. Okay. And so that's the first one. And then the second one, you saw most of it, but the only difference with the second one is that instead of one vanishing point, there's two of them. Okay, one at the left and one at the right. Um, then you start this time by not making a whole shape, just the corner of it, okay? Um, and then right here, um, you, know, you do the same thing where you uh, converge the lines to each point. Um, but just keep in mind that like these first ones, you're going in the same, you know, same direction as the point. So left lines to the left point, right lines to the right point. Then when you do the secondary lines, um, they're going the opposite way. Okay. So before you do the secondary lines, you want to make the other edges of the shape. This, this process is a little different than the one point. Um, so after you make the vertical lines, then you can do the second um, converging part. Okay, just let me know. Just type it in the chat box if that's confusing or I went too fast, okay? Um, okay, so wait, I see one new message. Okay. Um, okay, so at this point, <laughs> we're gonna do um, your drawings from life. Um, which is hard because I'm not physically there to, to see how you guys are doing. Um, but I want you to just try, try to time yourself while you're doing this, okay? Um, so we're gonna do one drawing with your object um, in one point perspective. So again, just to you know, demonstrate something just straightforward like this and like, Usually if you're drawing it on your table, you're gonna have like the bird's eye view of it, okay? Um, so, you know, just try to draw it exactly using the same system that we did, um, you know, with the horizon line, try to figure out, um, you know, where your horizon line is. So like, I'm sorry guys, I'm having a hard time doing this digitally. So, you know, if my book is here, um, my horizon line is a little higher than the book. So in my drawing, it would be below the horizon line, okay? Um, whereas like, you know, let's say I decided to prop my book up in this, you know, let's imagine there's something there. Um, then at this point, my eye level is right here beneath it. And so um, in that situation, it would go above the horizon line, okay? Um, so let's start with that. Um, and let's, it's 4.50. Let's see if by 5.05, um, okay, at 5.05 that we can um, just complete the drawing. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? So. If you were with me last week, I want you to try to implement what you learned about value into this, okay? So just kind of observing the book um, or whatever object that you have in front of you, um, you know, how is it to shade a geometric shape or something that's not organic? Um, you'll notice that the value is a lot more consistent, like, um, you know, the way that you're shading will be a little bit more precise um, and you won't have to sort of navigate around these like curves and sort of like, um, you know, random little shapes or nuances that are like found in, you know, fruit or other organic materials. Um, and, you know, how is that different? Um, do you still see the same things like a reflective light 
or a shadow or a cast shadow. Um, you know, I'm going to challenge you guys to sort of incorporate those things with a time limit. Okay. I know that seems stressful, but it's a really great way to practice drawing. Okay. Um, so I want you, I'm going to give you guys 15 minutes to do that starting um, shortly in like a, in a minute. Okay. Um, but I will still be here. Please, please feel free to send me photos um, or reach out if you have any questions. Okay. Um, and then at 4.15, or sorry, at 5, sorry guys, at 5.05, .05, um, we'll do the second drawing, okay? All right. Use like a pencil or anything, like an instrument like this, and sort of like, you can close one eye if it helps, and just try to figure out like what direction the line is going in, and then bring that straight down to your paper, okay? Um, and then at that point, you can like line your ruler up to the line and just draw it in, okay? I don't know if that makes sense without seeing it actually done. If it doesn't, <laughs> just let me know and I'll try my best to uh, show you guys. in my process. Um, so what I'm showing you first is the photo, uh, just a photo of like what's in front of me. Um, so I chose to draw this box. Um, and just for reference, um, <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't quite get it at the same eye level that I drew it at. So it does look a little bit different in the drawing. Um, but that being said, it's also like a relatively flat white box. It doesn't have any like crazy texture on it. Um, and so you can see that the value on it is pretty flat, okay? Um, so I'm gonna show you the drawing now. Um, so on my paper, um, my sketchbook is very small and I could not fit the vanishing point on it. So I had to go by sort of our eyeball technique of just sort of measuring the lines using a, a tool. Um, and you know, if you're, you don't feel comfortable doing that, then you can, you know, use a piece of paper or, you know, like a piece of tape to mark your vanishing point elsewhere. Um, if it does, if you do find yourself, um, you know, having to go off of the page in order to make it. Um, but even so, you know, you kind of just see the, the general idea that um, I'm looking at the box from the front perspective and the lines that are converging are from the top because I'm looking over it. So that's all I can really see. Um, and everything else is very straightforward. Um, you know, the lines are vertical. Um, you know, if we were to see a 3D vision of this box, then you would also see the vertical corners of the back um, and the lines that are right here would be converging towards the middle as well. Um, and, you know, I shaded this pretty quickly. 
Um, but what I focused on when I was shading was really just trying to get the actual um, values correct. Um, so not so much in having like a perfect, perfectly shaded box, but just, um, you know, the idea that it's white or that it's like very light um, and that it has a very, you know, the darkest point in this drawing is the shadow beneath the, the direct cast shadow. Um, and in my drawing or like in my um, setup right here, um, I have a very dark table. And so I can't really see the other shadows that are going on. And, you know, it would have been different if it was on a different color. Um, and that's something that I didn't touch on too much last class that I wanted to sort of bring up again um, in terms of value. Um, you know, the, the actual color of an object really plays a big role in determining the value of it. So like, for example, you know, this white box is pretty, you know, light. So um, if I was drawing this whole scene in front of me, I would barely put any value at all on the box. Whereas, you know, for example, this table would be very, very like close to black on my drawing. Um, and, you know, when you're coloring something in or shading something, um, it's really important to be aware of all these relationships, especially in terms of color, um, you know. So every, every color has like a frequency um, and a different like, um, you know, effects in the ways that we see it. Um, and even if you're drawing something monochromatically or in black and white, um, it's something that you can still incorporate into your drawing, okay? Does anyone have any questions about that first activity? No, okay. So I realize it's 5.15. Um, so if you'd like to, I, I will stay on because I can. Um, so the next activity that we're going to do is to draw the object in two point perspective. So instead of frontal on the side, so you would just be rotating it. Um, I will stay on um, for you guys to engage in that activity right now if you want. Um, if you're tired uh, or if you got to go, that's totally fine. Um, it can be something that you can take with you um, or, you know, do it at another time. Um, but if you'd like to do it right now, um, by all means, I am still here and um, will continue. Um, I'm also going to do it. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, so same, same idea, um, you know, just flip your page or grab another sheet and we'll start um, doing it in two point. And it's 5.15 now, so at 5.30 um, we'll reconvene, okay? Also, um, if anyone does need to leave, if you want to leave your email in the chat, either to me, Chantal, or Alyssa, then we will email you. I'll email you the, the links for future classes. I mean, it's the same link, but, um, and also any other resources. And we have some other online classes that are free as well. There's some like graphic design classes. There's an architecture model making class next week. And there's a film club. All of those are like free and open to all teens. So um, yeah, and you can message that to, to us privately, like to either me or Alyssa, if you don't want everyone to see your email. Yes, yeah. Um, I usually send out, um, you know, the like photos that I've taken, the like step-by-step -step drawings and whatnot. So if you would like that, just like for your own reference, um, then yeah, feel free to leave your email in the chat.
briefly so we can you can get on with your day um but i just wanted to show you the the you know finished not finished product but of our short activity um the two point perspective piece um and you know it's there's not much more to say about it than the um, the one point perspective, but um, again, like my vanishing point was pretty far away from um, my sketchbook. So again, I eyeballed it. Um, and you know, in this situation, um, when it's turned in this way, um, the light doesn't bounce off exactly like it does on a more round shape because it's technically, being um, you know severed by these very sharp corners, um, but I do want to talk a little bit about um, value and um, the two point perspective. Um, so because this is more of a flat shape, the value in general is going to be flatter. Um, so in you know this area that's pretty much all in shadow, um, the way I'm seeing it in front of me is pretty much a solid gray, other than this shadow right here. Um, and, you know, because I have a direct light source coming from my window, this portion is pretty much white. Um, and the only place where the light really, really bounces off is um, on the top. Um, but really, this isn't that accurate because, um, you know, if I had more time, I would have gone in and um, shaded it a little more. Um, in reality, this top part is a little bit darker. Um, but in general, when you're drawing something with like very sharp lines like this, um, just a little bit about shadows and um, highlights, um, usually the edge um, of something like the corner um, or, you know, this kind of top part, anything where it bends, um, there's, a, there's a really high contrast in that area. So, um, you know, on this area that's in shadow, the darkest point is right here at the edge. Whereas where it's, um, you know, the light is hitting it, the highlight is really right on the other side. Um, and the same goes for most of these areas, um, other than right here, because the light isn't really accessing this area. But in the top, um, you know, and in this area and all the other edges, um, the shadows are usually very high contrast at the edges and pretty flat everywhere else. Um, if you have like a relatively non-textured geometric object, that's generally how it is. Um, you know, it's really when things are round or um, don't have such defining structures that um, the light plays around it a lot more and there's a lot of, you know, there's a much larger range in values. Um, when that's happening. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of our little lesson for today. Um, please feel free to shout out any questions um, if there's anything that was unclear um, or if, you know, like, like we said earlier, if you would like to have more resources on this um, and then practice. Um, it's really like the best way to um, get better at drawing um, I can tell you firsthand, um, if you feel comfortable enough, like you can try drawing, um, you know, a really simple thing is like a window, um, you know, a window or like a stack of books, um, boxes. Um, if you really want to challenge yourself, you can try to draw like the, you know, if you have a building across the street or maybe like in front of your own building or even just like the surroundings in your room. Um, but that is what we're going to do next week together. So um, you can also wait until next week. Um, let me stop sharing this so I can see better. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about it for today. Um, thank you all so much for coming. And um, I really hope to see you next week for more perspective. Um, yeah, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much.